met her in the fall. He took her to a movie, and when they done it all, he took her. Hello, welcome to the Fabulous Picture Show. I'm Amanda Palmer, and this week we've got director Liz Merman and one of her stars, Alex Just, and we'll be screening their Fly on the Wall documentary, Team Cutter. It's an exhilarating story <laughs> of how five teenagers make it to the World Debate Championship from a very shaky start. You were really bad. CA doesn't stand for great tape. Debate coach Alex just tells us why he loved his mostly Middle Eastern team. If we'd had a North Korean on the team, it would have been the full Actors of Evil. Uh... And later, Woody on his Oscar-nominated The Messenger and the Middle East Conflict. I'm already going to be in big trouble for this. But first, Spanish director Alejandro Menabar has a rare gift of winning awards, making money, and as our very own Lama Matter reports, helping big stars become even bigger. Alejandro Menabar's new film Agora, set in 4th century Egypt, is an epic about the fall of an empire. It follows his Oscar winning The Sea Inside with Javier Bardem. As a quadriplegic fighting for the right to die. Amigo, dice. Amigo Ramon. Una libertad que elimina la vida no es libertad. Y una vida que elimina la libertad tampoco es vida. The role won Bardem international acclaim. You went from something small and so intimate like The Sea Inside which of course won you the best foreign film Oscar. Uh -huh. And then you go to this cosmic, historical epic. It's a huge leap for you. It is, but actually it started at the very same place, in a ship uh, watching the sea. And here I was in the ship watching the stars, discussing with my friends whether there would be life in another planet. I started uh, uh, reading about astronomy, which is something that I had never been interested in before. And we got to new this woman that almost nobody has uh, written about. What if there were a simpler explanation for the wondrous? There is. But this is so absurd, so old. What theory is that? Do you speak of Aristarchus? She happened to live in Alexandria while the decline of the Roman Empire, which meant that the movie would be a little bit more expensive than the one before. <laughs> the heliocentric model. That's right. Which would make Earth just... His wealth was lost. Another wanderer. Agora cost 70 million dollars, but it wasn't Amenabar's first big budget Hollywood film. <laughs> the Others, a gothic ghost story, not only proved the versatility of Nicole Kidman, but also grossed more than 200 million dollars, firmly establishing Amenabar as a bankable jack of all trades. His second feature, Open Your Eyes, a romantic thriller starring Penelope Cruz. Está persiguiendo una tía. No me digas. Sí, necesito darle la chapa a alguien para librarme de ella. Ah, y me ha tocado a mí. Was remade as a Tom Cruise vehicle with Penelope as his co-star. I think she's the saddest girl to ever hold a martini. And so the Spanish siren got her Hollywood breakthrough. I am not going in there. Why? Good night. Now with Agora, Menobar gives another strong leading lady a chance to turn it up a notch. When Aspasius drops the sack, the boat will be moving forwards. Therefore, the sack won't fall at the foot of the mast, but further back... Rachel Weiss plays philosopher Hypatia with two suitors, Orestes... What is so special about that? ...and Davis... ...vying for her love as civilization crumbles around her. Move, move, move your feet, move! Idiot. It's a beautiful production. Um, I think one of the most interesting things for me is that even though this film is set in the fourth century, it's so relevant to today. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah, me I about what you were trying to say. Because I know, I know one of your sayings is that your movies aren't movies about answers, they're about questions. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> I'm quoting you. Exactly. Well, um, uh, maybe there is some sound answers here. I don't know, but the more we research about the period, the more links we found with our reality. What happened in those times was basically that different religious groups uh, started killing each other 
and killing people just for, for just thinking. And we still have that nowadays, where we have people willing to kill for ideas. And I find that that's very uh, disturbing. Woody Harrelson is known for his incredible acting range, from sweet to super scary, and for his political activism. And now he's also known for his two Oscar nominations. In The Messenger, Woody Harrelson is responsible for reporting the deaths of soldiers to their families. Are you Mrs. Peterson? How did it happen? He was killed in action yesterday. As a recovering alcoholic Tony Stone, he's also charged with training young Ben Foster Sergeant. in this One sensitive art. I know what you're thinking. I'm a goddamn decorated war hero with three months left to serve. I get a beeper, canned speech, and a lunatic commanding officer to surf a an ocean of grief. The depth and humor of his character. Am I right? More or less, sir. And Woody, an Oscar nomination. This film, I mean, it certainly drained my heart and pulled my heart out and gave it a bit of a, a beating because it was <laughs> exhausting yeah, in many yeah. ways. It must have been exhausting to make. My character is uh, Tony Stone and meant to be stone-like, you know, not to be emotional. Uh, and quite frankly, I've never been so emotional. Like, I, I cried so much during the course of this thing. Your son, Walter Flanagan, died yesterday. <laughs> Woody has a long history of activism. He's used his fame to campaign for the environment. Why'd you do it, Woody? You get it to save the redwoods, man. Tested industrial hemp seed. Helped change the law about growing cannabis in Kentucky. All right. And was vocally opposed to the Iraq war. You watch this film and you feel a great deal of sympathy for the men who go out there to defend their country. In terms of your peace activism, how did it fortify or, or did it not fortify the way you feel about war in Iraq? Oh, I'm never really going to change my uh, vantage point. I know, I know for certain there's 100% certainty that we're involved in an oil war. But I will say the time that I spent with the soldiers was, to me, one of the most valuable things I could experience, you know, because now I have a great deal of compassion and respect for those people who are putting their lives on the line every day. Woody was also opposed to the 2009 war in Gaza. The way this is being reported around the world, and may I suggest even America, it's not entirely telling the Americans the truth. Would you go that far? Because there's, now we're, we're wondering why people of certain stature aren't coming out and speaking against what's happening there. Well, that's a tough one. You know, people don't really want to talk about that because it, if you say anything against uh, Israel or Israeli policy, you really become a pariah. I went recently to Israel. I went into the Palestinian territory, spent a lot of time with, uh, you know, Israeli folks, people in the military, you know, who were some of my friends who I came over to visit. And one thing that the Israeli folks did agree to is that the settlers and the settlements, you know, these guys are out of control and what they're doing there, you know, they just, it's a land grab. Is there any hesitation with you at all, and not that you display it, as a Hollywood star talking about that? Yeah, I haven't really talked about it openly at all. I think that what's happening on both sides is terrible, you know, it's, there's, there's, uh, you know, suicide bombers go into Israel, blow themselves up. It's a terrible thing, you know. But, you, you know, to me, there's a difference between a suicide bomber going into Israel and blowing himself up and killing 20 people and, you know, an F-17 dropping bombs from the sky, you know. And it's, and it's really just a level of you know, how many people are dying. I can see our PR lady is even a bit nervous that we're talking about this. <laughs> you got to be you nervous so about going, this. What is she yeah. talking about? I'm already going to be in big trouble for this. <laughs> Sometimes the Army has to be concerned with something bigger than the truth. And it's not that they don't care about you. On the contrary, there is not a family on God's green earth that takes better care of you than the U.S. Army. Really? 
In part two of screening Tim Carter, I have the director here. This is Liz Merman and one of her stars, Alex Just. Well, stars, subject, whatever you want to call it. Great film and very sort of inspiring as well. Five people. Yeah, no, it's five incredible kids from Doha who go off to the World School's Debating Championships in Washington, and they've never debated um, competitively when the film starts. They get a boot camp from Alex, and they're extraordinary inspirational kids who I think counter every stereotype you might have about the Middle East. So you had to share your tricks. Yes, I did. Um, I'd done quite a lot of coaching before, but this was the first time that we'd ever taken Andy and I, uh, who's the other coach in the film, a team who'd never done any debating before and put them in the World Championships basically six months after they'd first learned what the activity was. With how much training? Uh, very intensive training. Three weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You are an ambitious man, really. Anyway, we'll find out more about that in part two. See you then. He met her in the